Hello everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Now, straight away, the distillery that is on this bottle is not actually the distillery that this bottle is from. So let's clear a few things up straight away. Um, this was purchased off Scotch Whiskey Auctions for £25. And any of you that do watch auctions, I encourage you to scroll to the very last page and just see all the, these unusual blends and miniatures which aren't particularly expensive and they're kind of cool bits of whiskey history. This one in particular is a nice bit of rivalry between two companies. So the Glen Guile Distillery is in Campbelltown, but they sell whiskey under the name Kilkerran. So for all of you that are Campbelltown fans, be it Springbank or Glen Scotia or Kilkerran, um, Kilkerran is owned by the same people that own Springbank, uh, J.A. Smith family, I believe it is. If I get that wrong, you're all going to murder me in this comment section, but I'm pretty sure it's J.A. Smith. Um, however, the name Glen Gyle, the copyright to that name, is actually owned by the Loch Lomond Distillery, significantly further north near Loch Lomond. So, the fact that it says Glen Gyle, eight-year-old, makes me think it can only really be approved by one company, which makes me think it probably is Loch Lomond content in here. Um, it's actually bottled under the name Fraser McDonald Distillery Co. Limited, and it was an Italian export. So all the, most of the writing is in Italian, minus the distillery and the name. Um, it's got an Italian export sticker on the top of it. It's 40% alcohol. There is a very small bit of print which indicates that it might be 40%. And I assume this was bottled either 89 or 1990 from a bit of research I've been able to do on the internet. It's probably not natural colour, it's definitely chill filtered, but it is an eight year old. Um, it doesn't say single malt on the bottle anywhere, as far as I'm aware. It just says 100% Scotch malt whiskey. <clears throat> so it could be a vatting of numerous different products that Loch Lomond make within one place. Although I suppose technically that would still be classed as a single malt whiskey. Um, I'm unsure what Loch Lomond owned at the time, so they could have sourced stuff from elsewhere. N numerous rule changes over the years have mean the definitions have altered. Not, everything's not as black and white as it is now, things were very different back then. So it, it may not be a single malt, it could be sourced from one distillery, but with different distillates or numerous different distilleries. We just don't know. Um, so this is one of our more unusual reviews because it's just a cool bit of affordable history with a little spat between two companies. I think Springbank tried to buy the Glengyle name back off Loch Lomond in 2002. Loch Lomond said no. Um, so. Glengyle operates under Kilkerran now, so it's a bit deceptive this whole name. Well, let's smell it, let's taste it, uh, let's see what 25 Quick can buy you from a whiskey that was bottled about 30-ish years ago. It's a very sweet nose, um, it's got notes of like candy corn and candy floss, um, quite artificially sugary stuff. Loads of powdered sugar, like powdered almonds, sugared almonds, all those kind of flavours. There is something within this that makes me think of feta can, which historically I haven't really gotten on with, but there's like a mustiness to it. But it could purely just be because of how long ago it was bottled. When I actually screwed the, uh, screwed the top off, the cardboard insert, which normally sticks to the top of the lid, had actually fallen and sealed the bottle. So it was only when I popped that you got the sound. Um, so, I've no idea how it's been stored, the labels are very tired up top. Um, so something could have happened to it, it could have been stored in the wrong conditions. But there is a mustiness to the smell, along with those very kind of artificial sweet notes. But yeah, loads of nuts, powdered sugar. Quite typical. I always think of Loch Lomond as kind of like a ginger spice flavour. Uh, certainly a smell. And there is a tiny bit of that oriental gingery thing in the background. Uh, but not enough to make me definitely say it's Loch Lomond. But let's see what's happening with the taste. It's pretty easy drinking, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's not like earth-stoppingly incredible whiskey. There's some really nice pineapple notes in there. Then very generic things like apple, pear, there's a bit of vanilla, there's a bit of caramel. The finish has this really kind of astringency to it, almost like um, like vinegar. It's not offensive, but it kind of makes my tongue feel a bit tight and a bit kind of sour. 
Again, could just be to amount the time it's spent in a bottle. It's soft, it's sweet. If it wouldn't have had labelling on it to say malt, I probably would have guessed it was a blend because there are some, again, that vinegary note, that sour note, it's kind of making me think of, for want of a better phrase, cheaper, blend whis cheaper blended whiskies. But it's perfectly fine. There's nothing unusual about it at all. Um, in terms of scoring, it only, it's only going to get like a six. Uh, it's not like really impressive whiskey, but it's just something affordable that I can have at home and reference for other stuff that's bottled in this era. I'm trying to do that now because it's nice to build up a collection of older bottlings that aren't expensive, which you can do on auction sites. They do have their benefits. You can get some really serious bargains on an auction site. Um, but yeah, this is the Glengyle, which isn't a Glengyle, which is actually possibly from Loch Lomond, but reminds me a little bit of Fetican. Um, either way, we definitely know it's not from the Campbelltown area. It does say Highland on the front of it, so that was kind of a big indicator straight away. Um, but yeah, Glengyle, eight-year-old, probably bottled in 89 or 90. Six out of ten, pretty easy drinking. This wasn't going to be a really in-depth video, it's just something kind of cool you can pick up on auctions. I encourage you to all to do it as long as you don't kind of break your wallet in half. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching and we'll see you next week. Cheers.